With that explanation of how a confocal works out of the way, let's discuss how to load settings for your particular combination of fluorophores. The way you do that in the software, there are two options. One is to load new uh, basic settings for your fluorophores. The other is to reuse the settings from a previously acquired image. So to load completely new settings, which is what you do uh, when it's the first time you've done something or the first time you're going to do uh, things in a certain way, you go to this drop down menu, you click here, and then you scroll through and find a setting that starts with MSL and that then has three or four fluorophores uh, that are very close to or include the ones that you are interested in. If you have fluorophores that are not very conventional and that are not on this list, let me know and we can make a special setting for you. So for example, this particular sample that I have on now um, has DAPI, Alexa Fluor 488, and a fluorophore that's very similar to Alexa Fluor 594. So that is the setting that I'm going to load by clicking here. If instead I wanted to load settings from an image, I could do that by opening an image So um, let's see, as an example, I could open, for example, this image. And then I could reuse the settings from this. And the, the way to reuse the settings is by clicking here. Now, when you reuse the settings, it will reuse everything except the objective. It will not automatically change the objective, but it will change all of the stuff here and things that are hidden there, which I'll show you in a second. So if you click reuse, you'll see that these settings change. There's some tiling that was engaged, um, all because that is what this image was acquired with. Now we don't want to do that at this time. So I am just going to reload this, which I can do by clicking here and saying reload. When it has an asterisk, what it means is that the whatever is here has changed from the setting you loaded. So what is happening uh, when this particular setting is loaded on the microscope? So that's described here. You, you don't need to make any changes here. And I would strongly urge you not to touch anything here uh, because these settings have been carefully set up to minimize crosstalk. Um, but if you're curious as to what's happening, what's happening in this case is the following. Uh, we are taking three channels. We are first exciting the sample with the 561 laser and collecting the light uh, that is longer in wavelength to 575. That is going to one of the three detectors on this system. We are then exciting the sample with a 488 nanometer laser, which is uh, a good laser with which to excite Alexa Fluor 488, and collecting the light from 500 to 550 nanometers and sending it to another of the three detectors on this system. And finally, uh, we are exciting with the 405 laser, collecting the light lower than uh, 470 nanometers in wavelength and sending it uh, to the third detector on the system. And we are alternating what we use line by line. So we're scanning one line with the Alexa Fluor 594 setting, one line with the Alexa Fluor 488 setting, one line with the Alexa Fluor, uh, with the DAPI setting, and then for the next line, we repeat this process over and over until we acquire a full frame. In what follows, we won't need to use this imaging setup, so I'm going to close this. The only exception to that is if you need to do transmitted light imaging, and if that's the case, uh, a subsequent video will explain uh, what you need to click uh, and how to engage transmitted light. For now, uh, we do not need anything uh, uh, we do not need to adjust anything in imaging setup, so I'm going to close it to reduce the visual clutter in the workspace.